Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Fullest Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Bostwick. And today's guest is Dr. Roy Nambudrapad, who has completed his undergraduate and medical school education at the University of California, Irvine, which is local here to my home. He then completed a four-year residency in surgical and clinical pathology at UC Irvine Medical Center, which is the field focused on medical and surgical diagnoses. Then he subsequently spent a year training and getting certified in medical acupuncture through the UCLA Stanford program under Joseph Helms, MD. He's a member of the American Academy of Medical Acupuncture, as well as the director of research for the NAR Foundation, an organization focused on researching forms of non-conventional allergy treatment. In addition, he spent many years training in NAET with his world-renowned mother, Dr. Debbie. He specializes in NAET and medical acupuncture. I can go on, but I'm just so excited to hear directly from you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. So tell us, um, there's like, you know, when I was reading your bio, because I was super excited to have you on and learn more and share more about NAET, because like I mentioned to you before, it's really been a big part of my family and I's healing. Mm -hmm. But I... I didn't know that there was such a thing as medical acupuncture. Cause can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So in the last um, several years, um, acupuncture has just in general been gaining a lot more uh, sort of interest um, in the, in the general community, especially with uh, physicians. Um, and actually there's so a, a group of a medical doctors who have created their own sort of uh, association that researches and teaches acupuncture for physicians and nurses, um, dentists, etc. Sort of the conventional medical world, yeah. And I and I uh, learned about that soon after graduating my graduating my residency, and um, it was very convenient for me. Um, it was here on the West Coast, so I, I um, decided to give it a go. And and it was a year long program. It was it was really good. It was really intensive, actually, and and um, geared towards medicine, like what we do with trauma in the ER and things like that. But um, it, it helped me gain a, a deeper understanding of acupuncture, which I kind of wanted um, as I, I was kind of going into this field that my mom sort of created. Yeah, it makes sense. Definitely for you. I mean, uh, when I was reading your bio, I just felt like it naturally kind of progressed. You know, you have this like medical, intense medical background, but then you also understand like the energy medicine and stuff like that, which I think is so cool and so necessary right now. And, um, I recently had like last year I had on my acupuncturist who locally is here as well. Since you and I, I, are you local to orange County yourself? Yes. I live in Fullerton. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My acupuncturist is in, um, Costa Mesa as well. And I had her on and I, I didn't realize like the history of acupuncture and how, um, I think it was Nixon that kind of like brought it back because he was in China and they used it instead of what's it called? Like numbing someone. Right. For anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of anesthesia, someone in his team needed to get like a last minute surgery and they didn't have time to give him anesthesia. And so they used acupuncture. And I was so blown away by that because I, I'm really just interested in like preventative medicine. I haven't necessarily had very many things that I needed like real healing from, obviously Mm -hmm. I have had my own journey, but I would say I use it preventatively and for upkeep. But like when I hear stuff like that, I think it's so incredible. And, and then I also, I'm pregnant with my second child and I was, Mm -hmm. thank you so much. And, um, I was learning about how midwives, some midwives in other countries are trained in acupuncture yes, because it helps right. with pain management mm-hmm. again, the anesthesia thing. So that's so interesting that, and I'm so happy that there's, um, you know, a group of people or that there's like a board of medical doctors that have created a group to make yes. sure that this information is being shared. Across yeah. The- especially in the military, it's actually gaining steam, like in the air force, um, uh, and the, and the veterans hospitals, they actually have acupuncture standard now. Um, it, and the military has realized, I think that it's very cost effective as a modality. 
you know, you, you wow. basically just need, just need some needles and it's portable. You can take it with you. If somebody, you know, has a, has a gunshot wound or trauma or something like that, um, needles are actually quite effective in reducing pain, as you mentioned, with, with uh, sort of nerve uh, control and things like this. So the wow. military has realized actually it's quite effective. So they're one of the groups um, of people that actually is researching it actively. But actually, interestingly, acupuncture has a quite extensive history beyond China and Nixon days. Um, unfortunately, it's quite sad. You know, before communism uh, came to China, acupuncture was more, I think NAT, the, the technique that we're talking about, is is was more relevant to that form of acupuncture before communism. It was mm -hmm. more based on energy, like qigong and, and uh, energy flow. Uh, yeah. That kind of went away as as communism gained control in China. They wanted to compete against the West, so they made it more sort of like scientific, more based on like experiments and nerve control and, and anesthesia, as you mentioned. So it, it actually um, the the original form of acupuncture is a lost art. Hi everyone, I'm interrupting this episode to tell you about something I'm super passionate about. If you follow our newsletter or personally follow me on social media, then you're probably aware that I'm on a mission to create a totally non-toxic home. It's a process that's not always easy and takes time. And recently we've been trying to tackle textiles and have been searching for cleaner alternatives that are only made from natural fibers. This is a surprising road to embark on because so many textiles contain contaminants and ironically, Many, if not all the yoga mats I know of contain toxins and plastics that are not good for the environment or your personal health, no matter how much the brand convinces you of their sustainability practices. That's why I was super thrilled to discover Bend and I'm really excited to share about them with you. Bend Yoga strives to support their customers' personal wellness by providing naturally made and medicinally dyed yoga products. Basically, they use only sustainable and ethical fibers and materials, and not only do they dye their pieces with 100% plant-based formulas, they actually infuse them with traditionally used medicinal Ayurvedic herbs. They weave them into the fabric of every yoga mat and meditation pillow to support your immune health, the endocrine system, circulation, and digestion. So more than being just a non-toxic textile, these textiles that they're using actually promote wellness. They're also crafted on traditional hand looms by highly experienced artisans in the Ayurvedic tradition, with every step thoughtfully designed in balance with the environment and the planet. Honestly, this could not be a brand that aligned more with my personal philosophy on home, nature as medicine, and environmental stewardship. For that reason, it was a no-brainer to partner with them. I strongly recommend swapping out your current yoga mat and meditation accessories for one of their healing alternatives if you're due for an upgrade or if you're just also looking to detox your textiles. Bend is also offering the fullest listeners $20 off your Bend order when you use code THEFULLEST at checkout. Visit bendyoga.com. That's bend with two N's and experience the added benefits of a medicinally dyed yoga mat or meditation pillow today. Okay, let's get into NAT. So when your mom came up with NAT, mm -hmm. were you, was it before you went the medical route? Yeah, so um, basically when I was about, I want to say three or four years old, um, is roughly around the time when she really started get, getting going with it. Um, I was sick as a child. She was also having a lot of issues herself, a lot of chronic issues. Um, and we were kind of, uh, as a family, uh, kind of dealing with that. And, and uh, she especially was just very frustrated with general medicine and, you know, nothing was really helping her. Um, as I'm, sur I'm sure many of your listeners are, are experiencing currently uh, with chronic health issues, especially uh, Western medicine is, is limited. Um, yeah. It's very good for acute care. And you know, if you're having an acute heart attack or, you know, as I said, a gunshot wound or trauma, obviously there's a time and place for that. But 
for chronic health issues, um, there's very, very little in terms of what it can offer. So um, she sort of was forced into this. And for whatever reason, you know, she was the one to sort of stumble upon this, <laughs> this technique, um, you know, and, and uh, it helped me a lot as a child. And, and wow. of course, my family and herself. And uh, yeah, by the time I, you know, I, I grew up, I went to medical school, it was already we were teaching thousands of people worldwide. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So didn't that give you a different lens of the medical world because it wasn't being really addressed in Western medicine? That's a really great question. And I actually think about that often as, as I finished, you know, all my education and I look back on it, I, I do think about that. So when I was going through uh, residency, especially in medical school, you know, there would be cases that would come my way and, and I would see how, uh, you know, our attending physicians or the hospital would manage those patients. And in my, I would have to bite my lip and, and just go along with what they would do. But yeah. in my, that back of my head, you know, I would, if, for example, there would be a cancer case Case or something. And, and when you look at the history, uh, the person may have had a divorce or some sort of emotional trauma preceding that. And from my experience with NAT, I, I know that some of that, some of that is related to this process. Um, but with Western medicine, we don't think in that terms, you know, we, we yeah. just think, you know, chemotherapy, radiation, etc., which is fine. But uh, I think there is definitely in the future, we're going to see a lot more mind body medicine and energy medicine. And all of this is connected. It's all, it's all, you know, uh, the body is just one whole organism. You can't separate it out. And, and um, that was the thought process that I had. But of course I had to, you know, pass my grades and get through the, get through my yeah. school and residency and everything and not get reprimanded. So, but, but once I was done, I was, I was ready to move on and yeah. uh, help NAT. So it, yeah, as you said, initially it was, a, it was a natural progression. I'm so happy that you had that, like, education before I mean not just from your mom but like you had that intuitive hit too because and then being in that situation you knew okay I'm just gonna bite my tongue I'm not gonna say anything versus like letting them you know not brainwash you but like teach yes, you yes right of course mm -hmm. they think is right and I mean I guess now you have two ways of healing someone but one is just like a lot easier on the body and makes more sense and has long-term effects rather than just like, Oh, okay. They survived that. And then survival rate is considered five years, you know? Yeah. You know, honestly, I had a very open mind uh, when I went to medical school. I, I honestly didn't know really, I was, I was young and I didn't really know what to believe uh, to be. I didn't have much experience with patients. So I was very open-minded, but having ha heard and seen all the cases from, you know, with NAT and my mom and, and then going through this, I naturally came to the logical conclusion that that what we are doing in medicine in, in many of the chronic issues is wrong, actually. Um, and and uh, there is another way. And I actually naturally came to that conclusion logically. So uh, I'm very happy yeah. with, with my position now, helping NAT. I'm sort of helping um, get research out and getting the word out on this. Um, we do have a up, uphill battle, you know. Of course, the pharmaceutical industry is really strong, um, yeah. and 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 the, the community in general, you know, all all of our citizens, our neighbors, they all understand. You know, you take a pill to get rid of your headache, et cetera. It, that whole sort of uh, framework of of thought needs to change in order to sort of be accepting towards something like energy medicine. But you know, I'm I'm committed, and 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 I, I see the results. Uh, and later on, I treated my own patients, of course, in, in clinic as an NAT practitioner for many years. And many of my patients just would hug me and cry and, you know, be so happy with the results. It, it, it just, it was a no brainer for me. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm really excited to finally share what it is to people. So I, what is NAT? Can you tell us? Yeah. So um, it stands for Nabudrapod's Allergy Elimination Techniques, just a name for a technique that my mom developed many years ago. Um, basically, the, the simplest way for me to explain it is it's sort of reprogramming the nerves and the spine and the brain and the body to sort of not overreact to items in your environment. So okay. essentially foods, chemicals, emotions, even people, you can react to people, mm -hmm. uh, pets, et cetera. And um, this is all involving the nerves and the body and the, the energy. And um, we have found through acupressure, essentially, and acupuncture techniques that, and um, certain sort of manipulation techniques that you can sort of... Um, sort of calm down the mind in a way. And, and um, it's, a, it's a way of relaxation while uh, you're exposed to these items. And so that 
the, the goal is in the future, if you're exposed to that same item, let's say a peanut, for example, uh, that you would not have the same reaction as you did before. Mm -hmm. No, that makes perfect sense. The first time I had heard about it actually was years and years ago. Um, I was doing like a yoga teacher training. I think it was like, maybe it was even a decade ago at this point. And a friend of mine said to me in passing, Oh, I have this random allergy that I have now with apricots and I'm working on it with this technique and it's really helping. And it's like basically eliminating. I was like, how do you have an allergy to apricots? And she was like, well, actually like it started because I love apricots and I love eating them. But then I was in an accident while I, she like, not a really uh, bad, yes. mm -hmm. but she was in an accident while she was like taking a bite or yes. something out of right. an apricot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. her body started associating the apricot with the trauma yeah. and then she formed the allergy. And then through your technique, she was able to you know, eat them and be fine. Yes, exactly. That, that's, that's a great example of, of a type of case that we deal with. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I just thought that was so incredible and I wanted to learn more about it, but then, um, you know, our program was over whatever, and I never heard more about it. And, and then one day I was driving and somehow, I don't know how I saw like some sign. And I went, I was looking for a chiropractor for my son and I ended up at Cone Health Institute. And then I saw all the NAT sprays NAET sprays. Those are your products, right? Um, yeah. So there are some there are some items that people uh, they they use the NAT name to sort of market it, but um, oh. NAT itself does not inc does not uh, sort of use any sort of products or items itself. It's it's a, a purely acupressure technique. Um, I love that. Yeah, over the years, you know, <laughs> as this has grown in popularity as, as any other brand, as you can imagine, uh, other companies sort of tag on and, and try to help and, and, and you know, help patients uh, through this process. But um, but yeah, the pure NAT technique is, is very natural. There's no products involved at all. It's all wow. uh, very the human body only. Uh -huh, correct. That's amazing. I mean, I love that even more because I do believe that like really it goes back to just your body healing itself, not yes. having to put in Correct. anything, even if it's a homeopathic or whatever, which is great. And like you said, supports, but right, like right. really goes back to the work. Yeah. And, and you can even be allergic to those uh, sprays, for example. Yeah. So some of our patients have been allergic to them. So you clear it just like with anything, you know, as I said, people, perfumes, chemicals, foods, whatever it is, even the sun itself, you can be allergic to radiation. So it's very sort of, uh, it's pretty <laughs> pervasive in terms of what all the possibilities you can imagine of what you can treat for. But um, it is, as you said, it's a lifestyle type thing. It's, it's a whole body sort of technique. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, I mean, in the example, like, so, okay. So then my, when my son was born, we started going there and we started doing NAAT and then my husband and I do it. And honestly, it has helped so much with dealing with just anything in life, like you said, or any traumatic situation, like my husband's cousin just passed away. Mm. And, you know, like uh, at a very early age, it was an overdose. So like those oh, types of things yeah. are still, it's, Right, right. So yes. I'm just curious, like, mm -hmm. I'd love for you to expand on the fact that it's not just allergy, mm -hmm. like related, or can you explain yeah. that? Yeah, sure. So if you go back to kind of what I said, where, you know, it's the mind body connection that we're dealing with, really, and the energy of the body uh, being adverse to uh, things in your environment. So that that can that can apply to any part of your body, your mind, your body, your spirit. Uh, so you can have, you know, uh, psychiatric issues that develop with, with sort of these sensitivities or allergies, or you can have, uh, you know, heart issues, um, you know, cancers, as I said, that develop from emotional traumas. We've seen that actually sort of being associated. And if you ask a lot of uh, people in the cancer world, oftentimes you'll see that there are sort of triggers or emotional events that happen preceding to these sort of onset of these cancers, actually. So I think there's a lot for us to learn still about it, but, but NAT does deal with with um, all kinds of issues. The only thing I would say is a limitation is like direct trauma, like a gunshot wound or, or a, a stab, you know, with a knife or something like that, obviously, uh, or, um, you know, those kind of things. Um, 
that obviously NAT is not involving sort of a uh, sensitivity or allergy per se, but but the word allergy uh, is very broad in our sense. You know, it's not mm-hmm. just a typical like sinus issue or sneezing in the in the you know pollen season. It, it can be um, a a sensitivity to any kind of food or item in your environment, which can can cause a skin rash or you know uh, high blood pressure, et cetera, all kinds of things. So um, so it's very sort of uh, general term that we use in terms of allergy, but um, it, it may not be exactly the, like the medical world uses with a, yeah. a, a traditional sense of allergy. But yeah, it, it can apply to many different aspects of life. And with this type of work, I'm uh, assuming that there's like m- multiple ways to um, use it. So like you could become aware of something that you may not have been more aware of from before. Maybe you just didn't know or you suppressed it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when you become aware, I'm just curious, like the way the healing process works, is it something that is like, okay, it brings it to your attention so that you finally heal it and do something about it? Or is it if you're in a situation, like, for example, with the dog, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what it's doing with the dog is that it's making it so that you're less allergic, so you can have them in your space. Mm -hmm. how does it work with like people or being in a relationship with someone who, you know, like, do you think that there's sometimes where the goal is to completely remove them from the scenario or how, like, what does that healing look like? So, right. So good question. Um, there, you know, we're still doing active research on this. Um, the mechanism of NAT is kind of what you're asking basically. Um, and, and so far from what we have, there's a couple of studies on our website, actually, um, www.naet.com. And one of the studies actually points to an interesting concept called epigenetics, um, which is interesting. Epigenetics is where you alter things in your environment or in your body to sort of turn off the genetic expression of, of proteins or, or um, processes in your body. And I think yeah. NAT may have a, a, some sort of role in that process in some aspects of, of issues. Like, you know, for example, uh, like a traditional peanut allergy patient uh, with anaphylaxis or severe allergy, for example, it's it, it, the only way to explain how NAT would sort of turn off that process is that epigenetics, because we're not really changing the genetics per se, but we are, what we are doing is changing the expression that that patient in their body internally uh, expresses when they're exposed to peanut. This yeah. is different from emotional sort of issues um which you're mentioning with like people or, or or events per se which is also very powerful and we see great results with nat i think that mechanism may be a little bit different i think the the sort of manipulation and the acupressure that we do uh, sort of helps the brain calm down and the mm-hmm. nerves sort of um learn to sort of stay calm during that that uh, presence of that fear or trauma or whatever the case may be, um, and and I think that what you mentioned initially is actually quite interesting, which is the awareness. I do think that once patients go through NAT, generally speaking, they're or they are more aware of their emotions and surroundings and their stress levels, such that in the future, if they, they tend to not have as many emotional connections with items, they, they learn to sort of separate, you know, okay, I'm having, I'm having fear right now, but that is fear itself. It's not, it's not associated with this apricot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and so there, there's multiple ways that I think NAT helps people. Um, but the most sort of the most mysterious way, I think, um, that we need to research more is this physiological way, which is, as I mentioned, when you have a when you ingest a food item and it causes a real sort of a severe allergy, uh, which can only be helped with epinephrine, for example, in a hospital. In those cases, NAT actually has shown benefit. And the only way that as of now that we've uh, found a sort of a possible mechanism is uh, through epigenetics, I believe. Okay. That all makes perfect sense. So when it goes to emotional work, then you're able to decipher. And then like that way, it makes you more calm. So for example, for me, I mean, this is personal, but I can share it because I think it'll help people. Like I had, so my first birth, I gave birth in a hospital and I wanted to do it all natural, but um, ended up, I ended up getting induced, but I didn't want Pitocin. So then they gave me a pill and I didn't, 
understand what it was, it turns out that it was like an abortion pill. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But it's called Cytotech and they use it to um, get your contractions started. So oh, it's not gotcha. mm-hmm. necessarily like, but to me, I associate that with an abortion. And so, mm-hmm. and then I have a strong family, family history of like women. I'm from, Iran, my family's from Iran. And so mm-hmm. you can imagine like, like my grandmother's mother died from trying to give herself an abortion or like uh, okay. people in my family that have had abortions. And so, mm-hmm. um, as all, a lot of people do, but so specific situations where I associated it with like, so whatever shame or mm-hmm. I, I took on my family or ancestral lines shame because mm-hmm. I didn't have it or something, you know? Yes. So, and then, um, I needed to clear that because like now that I'm going into it, I needed to make sure that I wasn't bringing that on and into this pregnancy or just putting that towards my son. But mm-hmm. I thought it was such an incredible thing to become aware of. And, and it was just something as simple as, you know, just being asked questions by the mm-hmm. practitioner that didn't, yes, didn't true. Mm-hmm. Even, like she didn't know anything about that, but it just naturally flowed from me. So I think it's interesting to yeah. talk about because I think, mm-hmm. um, obviously I've gone through that. You're someone who does this on people or know how to train people. And I've been someone who's experienced this therapy, but mm-hmm. for people listening that have never experienced it, I'd love to share with them uh, kind of like what it, looks or sounds like because mm-hmm. it kind of looks like someone's doing like muscle testing on you right yeah so so that's a good question so the testing process is sort of variable um we actually use a lot more blood tests nowadays especially as i mentioned wow. with um with severe food allergies like peanut allergy we have to use go through the blood work um and or skin tests etc it's it's quite dangerous to just rely on muscle testing only so it, it, the testing has actually changed over the years to be more accurate uh we do we do still use muscle testing uh as sort of a general guide uh but the treatment has never changed the treatment has always looked the same uh, ever since i was a child um and that is that back treatment it's, it looks like sort of like a massage on the back um and that uh, and it's very very non-invasive. Um, some, you know, acupuncturists do use needles sometimes just to help with at, like acupuncture type uh, sort of processes, but it's not necessary. Actually, you can do everything without needles. It is it is pretty short. It takes about half an hour or so per session. Uh, the only downside is that it, it may require multiple sessions. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I actually published a, a study uh, that's a, a officially on PubMed. It's like an official medical journal, um, an article on a peanut allergy patient, a 19-year-old girl who uh, I treated, um, and and it took me almost 200 sessions to get her peanut allergy um, two classes down in the blood work. But the blood work did drop significantly, which is unheard of. It, typically, that does not occur without sort of immunotherapy or sort, sort of uh, tr- other treatment processes. So um, it was it was dramatic that that happened, actually. And the patient was actually able to ingest peanuts afterwards. So it was an amazing study. Wow. It's only one patient. Um, you know, I didn't have a uh, time or resources to do like a large study on it but it just goes to show the effectiveness of it but the treatment is really the key thing and that is the back treatment that massage the testing you know there are different ways and we also get the history so as you said your your own history personal history is very important in fact i think that's more important than the muscle testing to be honest with you you can get a lot of clues um and and uh, most patients know what they're allergic to um, and so that that's you know a, a good thing to go to when you when you sort of tailor the treatments. However, uh, one thing to keep in mind is for mo- I would say ninety nine percent of patients they all have to go through an initial basic uh, sort of treatment process of uh, about 15 sessions basically um, and what that and that almost never changes with anyone pretty much and um, that consists of essential nutrients that we that we have found that if you treat those in that specific order it pretty much addresses a lot of the issues um, that, that come up it's it saves you a lot of time actually instead of having to chase uh, your tail and try to go after you know uh, uh, go down the rabbit hole of different things that may not be relevant you know, um, so that's why we have a protocol actually that people have to follow if they're doing NAT properly anyway, uh, which is a 15 sessions that you do first. And then once that's done, then you go after these specific triggers. Um, and a lot of times patients actually feel a lot better within those 15 sessions. That makes sense. And for people who don't necessarily have like an, um, 
you know, intense peanut allergy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, like, there are so many things like you mentioned in our environment, is Mm -hmm. it? And there's so many people that process it different ways or don't know how to properly or their body doesn't necessarily detox certain things in the environment as well as other people, like kind of like MTHFR people or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm curious when it comes to things like geoengineering and chemtrails or um, EMFs and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, are those things that people can work on with NUT? Yes, absolutely. We've had many, many cases of that. Um, And and I I throw those in along with the same group of things as like foods and and environmental items as well. It's all pretty much the same to us. Basically, what it comes down to is your own body. The, the, those those items are not the problem, like the vaccines and, you know, people have reactions to vaccines. Why why would person A have a blood clot after getting the Pfizer vaccine, let's say, and person B does not have any issue at all? And they're both the same age, same sex, um, same background, like maybe even living in the same city. The only possible explanation is this sort of, as I said, sensitivity issue. And it's not wow. the vaccine's fault. It's more the, the fault of the immune system of the person. And so that's why these essential basics that I'm talking about, as well as, you know, addressing more of the, of the immune system of the body is really key because even though if you stop, let's say, the chemtrail reaction, who's to say that, you know, next year there will be some other sort of toxin that comes your way to affect you, you know? So that the yeah. key is to really uh, hone down on why your body is reacting this way. And then that way it will not react to pretty much anything. Oh, I see. So it's not necessarily that you have to go in to target that specific thing, like aluminum or, you know, that's, or or whatever that's being sprayed. And it's that your body will start to learn to like not react to things that typically would bug it or something like that? Yeah. So, so the initial, initial treatment process that I was mentioning, those basics that I was talking about, that sort of helps the body sort of deal with its overall immune system. And, yeah. and, and when we train practitioners, we teach them to really focus on that more importantly, because what happens is, as I said, it saves you time instead of having to chase, you know, the chemtrail and the vaccine and the aluminum or whatever, you know, you find yourself having to do less of that. You may have to, you know, uh, de- detoxify for aluminum, let's say, or something. Um, it, I'm not saying that you you won't have to, but what I'm saying is that the real cause of a lot of these problems is really the immune system. It's not those items per se. Yeah. Gosh, that's amazing. It's amazing to have the option to do this sort of work because, it, and and for you to be sharing this and for your mom to have come up with it, I mean, it's so cool that you get to firsthand see what she's created and yeah, how it's surreal. <laughs> like, I love it. What is she doing now? <laughs> yeah, she, you know, she's uh, a lot older, obviously, and and uh, she's trying to sort of deal with all the research aspects. And and uh, we're a lot of our courses that we teach are online now, you know, especially with COVID and everything. And so she's busy, you know, kind of getting that up um, and and getting uh, supporting our thousands of practitioners that that rely on us, you know, um, getting them updated training and things. So she's quite busy. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, so I mainly deal with all the social media stuff and, and kind of yeah. answering questions and helping our practitioners if they have issues and things. Like that. I actually don't see patients anymore for the last uh, couple of years uh, because I've been yeah. so busy dealing with yeah. um, all of this stuff. Um, you know, it, it, we're, we're a family business, essentially. Um, so we're kind yeah. of we have to deal with all of the, you know, the troubleshooting with all these thousands of practitioners. Um we actually just have a, a medical doctor in Iraq, actually, now you mentioned it, uh, who took the course, actually. And so I've been helping her kind of treating a lot of autistic children there in Iraq, believe it or not. And they're getting better. And there's no one else around her. You know, it's pretty amazing, you know, in those kind of uh, areas for someone to, like this, you know, uh, to do that. So it's it's this, um, the benefit of this internet is that we get, have more outreach. The, the downside is that it's a little more work for us because we have to sort of help them, you know, help each, each of these people yeah. ourselves, you know, with uh, all the, all the problems that come up. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So for people who aren't local to here, um, can you just share? So people, there are practitioners all over the world, obviously that are trained in this and you guys have, um, on your website, a way to contact them. Yeah. So if you go to uh, www naet.com uh, it's pretty simple go there and then um, there'll be a feature that says find a practitioner 
So you can click on that and just type in your zip code, or you can just search by country, as I said, Iraq or Canada or whatever the case may be. There are some countries that we, I think, still are not uh, sort of fully in yet. Um, but yeah, uh, we do have many in Europe, uh, Japan, Mexico, Canada, U.S., um, you know, et cetera, uh, even uh, Dubai, China. India. So um, we, we have people um, and hopefully you can find someone. But yeah, but more importantly, if, if someone is not around and, and and your listener has sort of sort of a health training or some sort of background that they can actually take this course, um, they can actually also take the course online. Uh, so let's say somebody in Africa or somewhere, who, a, a country that there maybe is not a practitioner but nearby but they may be a dentist or, or a psychologist or something, or even a therapist, uh, acupuncturist, they can actually take the course through the internet. Um, and then, of course, their scope is limited to what they can do with their license, but at least they would learn this information on the seminar, um, and they can even help their family, friends, etc. And um, that's our goal, really, right now, is to just get yeah. the word out. Um, and it is going word of mouth. We actually don't have a social media presence, believe it or not. Uh, it's very limited. Um, we're, we're actually trying to keep it down low because we don't want to get in trouble with any government or any authority because, yeah. as I said, we're a target of the pharmaceutical have. industry. Uh huh. Yeah, right. that's my next question question is like yeah. have you gotten pushback from pharma or yes there- Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, we have had pushback. So in Australia, uh, actually, uh, the government there, yeah, the government banned NAT <laughs> for use by anyone officially, uh, and that was headed up by the you know sort of the big pharma. Oh and, and there. Yeah, but we still have people sort of learning it and practicing it. Um, yeah. they just call it a different name essentially because you sense. you can't stop the truth. You know, if if people are getting better with this, um, there's nothing that's going to stop them. What about like, could I take the course? I have no, like, you know, background. Yeah. So you, you would not be able to practice NAT officially because you would need a license, you know, or, or certification to be able to uh, practice it. So, and it is quite an expensive course. So uh, so that's the limitation. Um, And and also the other exception we have is that if there's no one in your area, like you're, you're obviously seeing Dr. Cohn. So, but if you were like in, let's say Senegal, Africa or something like that, where there's no one there, then, you know, we might make possible exceptions, but um, so we have sort of requirements where we where we have for admission but uh but but generally because of all these restrictions restrictions that we're under we have to be careful about you know who we are training and uh, officially listing on our website and things like that okay that makes sense oh my gosh well i really appreciate you joining us and sharing about it and i hope that the people listening can learn more about it through yeah. and and hopefully it gives relief to a lot of people because i I Mm -hmm. think this is one of my favorite, definitely one of my favorite healing modalities that has helped us in so many ways as a family. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Yeah. Makes our job worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really believe in it. So thank you for your work and coming on and sharing with us today. Definitely. My pleasure.